gladly trade this world's glory for the one that's waiting for me. I would miss heaven for the world. This world is a wonderful place, but I'm not here to stay. I'm just a pilgrim passing through. But I'll keep traveling till the time that I make his home mine. The world can't keep this dream from coming true. I wouldn't miss heaven for the world. A mansion waits for me inside those gates of pearl. I gladly trade this world's glory for the one that's waiting for me. I wouldn't miss heaven for the world. Someday when I get to my home, I stand before the throne and join his children in a song. Sing about his amazing grace, I sweet to sing it to his face. Heaven is the place where I belong. I wouldn't miss heaven for the world. A mansion waits for me inside those gates of pearl. I gladly trade this world's glory for the one that's waiting for me. I wouldn't miss heaven for the world. I wouldn't miss heaven for the world. A mansion waits for me inside those gates of pearl. I gladly trade this world's glory for the one that's waiting for me. I'll trade this world's glory for the one that's waiting for me. I'll trade this world's glory for the one that's waiting for me. I would miss heaven. No, I would miss heaven. No, I would miss heaven for the world. For the world. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but praise God, my name is written in the book of life, and I'm on my way to heaven, and I'm not going to miss heaven for the world. Amen. Praise God. And that's all because of the amazing grace of God and His saving power and what Jesus has done for us on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus.
I'm so glad that there was a time in my life that God looked beyond my fall and saw my need of salvation. And as I called on his name and I invited Jesus into my heart and life, repented of my sins, that God kept, came and met me at that old-fashioned altar, saved my soul. It's all about God's grace, isn't it? God loving us so much that he sent his son to die on the cross that we might have eternal life. This evening, I would like to share a message entitled, Why do people fall under the power of God? Why do people fall under the power of God? God is the author of everything. God is the author of electricity. And electricity is God's power in the natural realm, the natural realm. And one time I was running a scrubber at a factory that I was working at when I had a small church. I'll never forget the time, and that uh, bare cord, there was a spot on it that touched the water. And man, I mean, I got a jolt, and that sent me flying across the room, and, and uh, my hair stood up. And the bosses came, and they took me and set me down, and it took quite a while. I caught quite a jolt, and it took quite a while for me to come back and get my composure back. But I've also experienced the supernatural power of God. I've experienced God's power in the spiritual realm, amen, that which is unseen and that which is unheard, but we know and have experienced Praise God, that power in our lives. And I remember the first time that I ever fell under the power of God. Dr. Fast, who's gone to be with Jesus now, was at our church holding revival. And back 24 years ago, uh, this is relatively new in, in that era or that time, we might say. Praise God, not new to Christendom, but at that particular time, it wasn't being manifested as much as it is today. And uh, Dr. Fast laid his hand on me. And I'll be honest with you, I was even a little bit resistant towards it, a little skeptical about this thing. And he laid his hand upon me, and the glory and the power of God came all over me. And even though I was trying to stand up, my, the power was so strong that uh, my legs just turned to rubber, and I just kind of slid right down on the floor under the power of God. And that was my first encounter. And then recently, a few, just a few months back, or you know, not too long ago, my wife asked for prayer. Usually I'm doing the ministering, and she asked for me to be prayed for by the people, and she came up and led them in prayer. And it wasn't too long. After a while, you know, I'd, we'd been worshiping the Lord, and all of a sudden, boom, beautiful experience. I went down into the power of God, and God really ministered to me. And I'm a person that has trouble with fear in different areas of my life. And as I was down on that floor, I tell you what, when you're truly slain in the Spirit, you fall under the power of God, God does a spiritual work in your life. It's not just to be seen by people, but it's a work of God where God is doing a work. And God, praise God, minister to my heart and minister to me concerning the fears that are in my life to help deliver me from them as I was under the power. Praise God. Why do people fall under the power? Because when the natural comes in contact with the supernatural, something's got to give. And uh, guess who's got to give? Praise God. You and I are the ones that got to give when we come under the power of God. In church history and in every uh, great evangelist like in every great move of God, people have fallen under the power of God. The man who wrote most of the New Testament fell under the power of God, the Apostle Paul. John Wesley, a Methodist preacher, had, had hundreds of people during his ministry fall under the power of God. And one particular time, the first time uh, that it happened under his ministry that he saw this, right in the middle of his sermon or message as he was preaching, there was a lady in the front row that just fell right on her face during his message. And he thought that the woman had fallen that she had fainted and so he asked if there was a doctor in the house so three doctors came up and examined this lady and each and every one of them said her her heart rate is all right her pulse and and her respirations there doesn't seem to be anything 
physically wrong with her, and they said it seems like that she's under some kind of spell. And then a hypnotist that was in the audience also asked permission to look at the lady and examine her. And he said he didn't know what it was either, but he also uh, thought that, the, that she was under some kind of spell. People asked themselves as they were uh, looking on to what had taken place uh, as he had stopped preaching and they were looking at this woman to see what was going on. And some people thought perhaps this was of the devil. And other people were sitting there in, or there in the audience thought that perhaps it was something that was of God. And so John Wesley did not resume preaching, and so for 45 minutes they just observed this lady in this condition. And after that time she began to stir, and the first thing that she said was, Praise the Lord! Glory to God! Hallelujah! And so as this happened, praise God, it was the Lord, praise God, Wesley shouted and told the people, Praise God! It's the Lord, and, and the Lord got all the glory, and people began to praise the Lord as a result of it. And the woman said Jesus had appeared to her and had taken her to heaven during this time. And she shared all that she saw, and everyone in the place was blessed and began to praise the Lord. Charles Finney told of the first time it happened in one of his meetings. He was a Presbyterian minister at the time. And one Sunday afternoon, while he was preaching, about 15 minutes into his message, people started falling off their seats. They were all sitting there in the congregation, and all of a sudden they all started falling off their seats. And about 400 people, after a short period of time, had fallen under the power and were on the floor. And Finney learned later, and we cannot out, we always understand everything that God does, and we cannot question God. But as he found out later that those people that had fallen under their power, not one of them was saved. But afterwards they all got saved that day and gave their hearts to God as they encountered the glory and the presence of God. Amen. It is a historical fact that George Whitefield preached in the courthouse square in Boston, uh, Massachusetts. And some young man had climbed up into the tree, and as Whitefield was passing by, he told the young man, you better come down, because when I start preaching, the power of God is going to come down, and you're going to fall out of that tree. So they came down on the tree, and uh, as he was preaching, people began to fall under the power of God all over that square. Now you know when it's of God. When people are falling down all over the place and they're falling on concrete, not falling on, on, uh, on sawdust, they're not falling on, on uh, carpeted floors, but falling right down on the power of God, amen, right on the concrete. And by the, way, by the way, if somebody falls on the power of God, they don't need catchers. They don't need somebody there to hold them up. Praise God, if they truly fall under the power of God and it's the glory of God coming upon them, they will not get hurt. Praise God. Peter Cartwright, a Methodist preacher who was uh, in Kentucky in that area, was one of those preachers that went around preaching camp meetings all the time. Praise God. People fell under the power in his ministry also. He was an old-time Methodist who believed in holiness, and, and praise God, he didn't believe in dances. That's a long time ago. But the Spirit of God told him to go to a dance one night. And he went early, and he stood against the wall. And a man, as he was there, a woman came up to him and asked him to, uh, to dance. He went out in the middle of the floor. He took her wrist. He began to pray and ask God to bless him. And he fell down on his knees, and he prayed at the top of his voice, my God, save this bunch of heathens. And he began to pray. He said, Lord, save the fiddler. God, save the dancers. God, save the banjo player. God, save everybody here. And his eyes were shut at the time. And as he was praying, he heard a, a big thud, and someone fell under the power of God. Then another fell under the power of God. And after a while, it was like slap, 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 or thud, 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 whatever. Praise God. He opened his eyes. And every single person in that dance hall had fallen 
under the power and the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You cannot uh, see the Holy Spirit any more than you can see the wind. You can't praise God. But we can see the results of the wind. And we can see the results of the demonstration and the power of the Holy Ghost as God is working in the hearts of people. And as the Spirit of God comes upon people, we can see that in operation. Let's look at some biblical accounts of people falling under the power of God. John, the 18th chapter. You can write these down and read them later. John, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 6. We see here that as Judas had betrayed Jesus and was bringing the soldiers to Jesus, as they came, it says that they all went down under the power of God. They all went down under the power of God. You might say, well, that was in the presence of Jesus. But I want you to know that the Bible says when two or three, amen, are gathered together in my name, Jesus said, there am I in the midst of them. And when Jesus is in the midst of us, when the presence of the Lord is there, amen, anything and everything can happen, hallelujah, during that time. Matthew 28, 1 through 4. We see here the watch of soldiers that guarded the tomb of Jesus after his death. And when the angel rolled the stone away, it says, And for fear of him the keepers did shake and became as dead men. They shook and became as dead men. I'll tell you, when you come into the presence of a holy, awesome, glorious God, amen, hallow, you can tremble in the presence of God. I went to a meeting a few years ago up in Pennsylvania where a man was speaking and they had been enjoying a revival in their church for four years, even before Brownsville or these other revivals had broken out. They had been experienced that type of revival. And as that man spoke and shared the things of God, and as the altar calls took place, the first night I went down there and I was standing around with everybody worshiping the Lord, and I just simply shook and trembled in the presence of God. That second night I went down, I was kneeling before the Lord, and again I experienced this, the presence of the Lord so strong upon me that I was trembling and shaking in the presence of God. All oh, the power of God, the glory of God, the Shekinah glory of God that can come down in the midst of God's people as they seek His face. And that changed my life. It was a, a great experience that took place. And then I found out later on many of the people like Moses and, and different uh, patriarchs and different people in the Bible, many of the people in the Bible shook and trembled in the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew 17 verses 1 through 6. We have the story of the, of the transfiguration of Jesus. And what it was is Jesus took his disciples up there, and he, was, uh, he went from the natural into the glorification, glorified body. And they was able to preview the resurrection. They was, have a, they was able to have a foretaste of glory divine. They was able to see Christ. He was going to be, praise God, in his, uh, his natural state later on where he was going to be glorified. Amen. And he was, uh, praise God, sent back also to earth his representative. And the representative that God has sent to us, praise God, the comforter, that he could be in us and, and with us, praise God, that the Spirit of God could dwell with us and the Spirit of the anointing can be upon us, that we can experience through the power of the Holy Spirit, God's representative on earth, the third person of Trinity, the glory and the presence of Jesus as if Jesus was standing in our very midst. Amen. Hallelujah. It's no wonder people fall when His power is manifested in the services. It's no wonder that people, praise God, that when they come in contact with the supernatural power of God, that their natural bodies have to give way to the power and the anointing of God upon their lives. In Acts, the ninth chapter, verse 4, Paul fell to the earth. And I always kind of thought, well, okay, the glory of God, he, the God spoke and the light came from heaven and everything, you know, okay, that He fell fell down himself before God and prostrated himself. But you know, as we look at Acts the 26th chapter and the 14th verse, as, as Paul has given an account, as he's talking about the uh, Damascus Road experience where God saved his soul and, and the light of God and the glory of God came down, this is what he says. It says that they all fell to the earth. 
that all the people that was with him fell to the earth. They all came in contact with the supernatural power of God. They all experienced the glory of God, hallelujah, upon their lives as they fell to the earth. But the Bible says only Paul heard God speak. But they all encountered the glory and the presence of God and fell under the power. So what we're saying is this evening is this, is that when people fall under the power of God, praise God, when they fall, praise God, they're falling because the glory of God is so strong upon them, praise God, and that's the only natural response to the glory of God, amen, is to fall under the power of God. Also, the Bible teaches three kinds of prostration. First of all, this voluntary prostration. Luke 17, 16, when we voluntarily fall on our knees or we voluntarily fall on our faces before God to worship Him. In Ephesians 3, Paul says, I, bowing knees unto the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he was voluntarily in the presence of God, voluntarily before God, prostrating himself bowing before God in honor and reverence of God, but also the prostration under a heavy burden. Matthew 26, is 26 verses 36 through 39. Jesus began being very sorrowful and very heavy, and he fell on his face, a heavy burden of prayer and of intercession for someone, a heavy burden upon you, uh, praise God, that can cause you to fall upon your face before God. Amen. Hallelujah. Galatians 4.19, there is a travail in the Spirit. And sometimes people fall prostrate before God, travailing in the Spirit, interceding with a heavy burden, praise God, for other people as we bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ, or perhaps even travailing in prayer in the Spirit for your own self. And then thirdly, praise God, uh, prostrate, being overwhelmed, as we're talking about this evening, by God's present. It is beyond the first two. It's beyond voluntarily bowing. It's beyond falling down and, and prostrating yourself with a heavy burden of intercession and prayer. Praise God. It is being overwhelmed by the presence of God, by the anointing of God, by the glory of God in your life as a Christian. Ezekiel 1.28 and 2.2. He saw the glory of God. Praise God. As he saw the glory, people think it sometimes it's funny when people fall under the power of God. Sometimes people make fun of or talk about it. Praise God. But wait, you know, here in the verse uh, 128, it talks about how they fell under the power of God. But in the second chapter, verse 2, they were stood back up by the power of God. I tell you what, wait till God starts standing people back up. And the glory of God is so strong that not only people go down in the power of God, but the power of God makes people stand up again. You say, well, boy, that's, uh, you know, that's kind of uh, outlandish, isn't it, preacher? Not when it comes to God. My God can do anything. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's not, the arm of the Lord is not shortened. With God, nothing's impossible. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Why did Ezekiel fall? Because he was overwhelmed with the glory of God. He saw the appearance of the likeness of the glory of God. Praise God. When in 2 Chronicles 5, 13 and 14, after the dedication of the temple, the Bible says that when the players of the musical instruments and the singers began to be as one, that unity, praise God, began to be as one, the house was filled with a cloud even the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister. Oh, hallelujah, the times where God's glory will become so strong. Amen. That you and I would not be able, the ministers of God would not be able to stand to their feet and be able to proclaim the gospel because it's the kind glory of God. The anointing would be so strong upon the body of Christ and God's people. Amen. Praise God. And so they could not stand, praise God, because of the reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Oh, hallelujah. God is pouring out His Spirit in these last days. He's pouring out His Shekinah glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And the glory of God came into that place like a cloud and filled that temple. Ezekiel saw the glory of God. And he fell under the power of God. 
glory filled the temple, and the priests could not stand, folks. Praise God. That's revival. Amen. That's a move of God. That's the anointing of God upon our lives. Amen. In the last days, the Bible says, there's going to be a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon our lives. And I believe that the, the places that we're hearing about the great revivals and the things that are happening, praise God, are examples, hallelujah, of God's power being poured out. But what's wonderful is God's working in my church. God's working in the churches in this area. God is working in the churches of this nation. And God is working throughout the world. The glory of God is being experienced, uh, praise God, by people of many denominations, uh, of many walks in life. As people are hungry for God, as we pray and we worship God, the Bible says the Lord inhabits the praises of His people. And the glory of God, praise God, comes down when you and I begin to praise Him and to glorify and honor the name of God. But also when you and I begin to talk in tongues and worship God in the Spirit, when we begin to, the Bible talks about how that the, at the house of Cornelius, they begin to speak in tongues and magnify God in that unknown language. Oh, when we begin not only to pray in our English, but when we begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, oh, the glory of God comes down, the anointing of God comes upon our lives as the body of Christ. Hallelujah, what a blessing. Hallelujah. What a privilege to live in the hour that you and I are living in. Oh, that some of the Old Testaments, yes, the Spirit of God came upon them at times to help them to do great exploits for God. But you and I as a children of God, as we have a hunger for God, as we seek God, as we come into the presence of God, hallelujah, in the presence of Jesus and worship Him and, and pray in the Spirit and allow the Spirit of God to move in our lives. We can experience what those priests did. We can experience what, uh, uh, praise God, Ezekiel did. We can see the glory of the manifested Jesus. We want to see him high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. And the Bible says if he will be lifted up, if Jesus is lifted up, all men are drawn to him. I believe as the Lord is lifted up through our lives and through our praise uh, to God, the power of God will come down and bless us. And God will minister our lives. And God will do something he's never done before. Oh, hallelujah, folks. Falling under the power of God is simply experiencing the supernatural, glorious power of God upon your lives. Seek the Lord. Worship God. Praise the Lord. Because God is blessing in these last days and pouring out His Spirit upon every person who has a hunger for God and for the Lord Jesus and His power and glory. Amen. Praise God. Like a rubber casing.